good morning and welcome to another video. You join me here today on a very overcast summer's day in the UK. Because it's meant to be summer, a lot of people look to buy a convertible at this time of year. And I've seen a lot going up online and some of them are meh, not that good condition. So I just wanted to do a video about the five things that I looked out for when purchasing my 2006 Mark III MX-5. <laughs> I was looking at buying this car I actually think I looked at about six or seven in total and one of them had a very questionable panel gap just here where the bumper joins the fender this panel gap also led to a really weird gap here on the headlight all around around the headlight Ugh, that's dirty the left hand side on that car looked absolutely fine but the right hand side just had a big question mark over it and I wasn't sure what happened in the end it turned out that the car that I was looking at actually had had a front crash and these panels are really difficult to line up. If you see a car with weird gaps around the front, I would question whether the bumper's been off and if that is because it's had a frontal impact. So the second thing that I would look out for is the soft top roof. I've never actually uh, looked at a hard top. There are a lot of power retractable hard tops sold in the UK, but because I've only ever looked at the soft top, I'm only gonna comment on the soft top version. Obviously you wanna be checking the overall condition of the roof. Are there any tears? You need to look inside the seams here. Are there any really bad rips that you can't see or that are being hidden? Around the back of the car, obviously we've got the heated rear window. Are there any rips or wear marks around the window? The window stitching, are there any stitches that are coming loose? Is the window secure inside the roof? The seals on the roof? Roof, connecting the roof to the glass are they perished are there any cracks in them are there any tears in them because in the long run these could lead to leaks the seal along the top of the roof above the windscreen check if there's any cracks in there on the inside the frame of the roof are all the bars in good working order and in good condition is there any rust on the inside in the UK, a really good way of seeing if your car does have a leaky roof is actually to check the floor mats. If there's any damp down here on the floor mat or underneath the floor mat, it's a really good sign that that roof could be leaking because the damp sort of gets in here and then it's really difficult for it to dry out. In the UK, it's really easy to spot because it rains a lot and if the car's parked outside, then uh, the, the floor gets really damp. You also want to check the latch of the roof to make sure that it latches securely on both the top of the windscreen and when it's folded away in the boot of the car. Funny story when I was actually looking at buying one of these, one of the sellers actually said the roof was broken on their car and they were prepared to knock £400 off the asking price because of the broken roof. But actually all that had happened is that they didn't push down hard enough on the latch. So I asked how long they'd owned the car and they said they'd had it for four years. So for four years, whenever they had the roof down, they were driving around with the roof actually flapping about. <laughs> thing that I would look out for just like on any old car is our good old friend Mr. Rust. So as far as I'm aware these cars rust in two main places. The main place that these cars rust are on the sills so they used to be really bad especially on the Mark II's the NB's. This section here is the sill and I have looked at some uh, Mark II's and they rust terribly in this area. If we look under here on my car you can see there's a tiny little bit of surface rust on this sill but actually it's not in too bad condition at all. Some of them you'll see they have big chunks taken out of here here and big holes in the rust. When looking at one of these, I would recommend taking a screwdriver with you and giving all the uh, panels a prod from underneath. This is gonna make sure that if anyone has tried to cover up any rust underneath the car, that your screwdriver should just go straight through it because a sill repair on an MX-5 is quite expensive for a cheap car. Also, some of the early MX-5s actually had some rust problems in the doors. This is where the doors get full of water and they just collect and build up rust on the inside. These aren't too bad and you can see that they've actually got a drain hole there in the door. So I don't think that uh, it's a major problem but always worth a look if you're down looking underneath the car. Another place that I'd always recommend looking for rust for in an MX-5 is actually inside the boot. What I'd do is ask the uh, owner if you can actually take any of the stuff out and actually lift the carpet up inside the boot and make sure that under here there isn't a big damp spot or any rust underneath. What I've actually heard of on private sales is people filling the boot with stuff so that the uh, person coming to view the car doesn't unload it and actually look at the rust that's in the bottom of the boot. But if this is rusting through, it's a huge panel underneath and probably cost you quite a lot of money if you need to fix that. 
The fourth thing to look out for are windscreen cracks. Because this is a convertible, there's no roof here to take the stresses of the chassis when it twists and flexes whilst you're driving. Because of that, Mazda have had to make the sills extra strong and put a lot of reinforcements under there. But it still actually has a lot of stress and a lot of pressure on the windscreen compared to a normal car with a roof. This can result to chips in the windscreen actually turning into cracks quite quickly. And it's something that I would definitely look out for when you're purchasing one. The fifth thing that I always look out for are the tires. Now I think the tires can actually give you a really good indication of the previous owner or owners of the car. First thing that I do is actually walk around the car and see if the axle sets of the tires are the same make. So we can see on this side we've got the Kumo Extra Sports. We've got Kumos on both the front axle. On the rears just checking that they're the same on both sides and we're good on the rears as well. Second thing that I would check with the tires is that they're all of the same size. This car came out the factory from Mazda with four of the same size wheels and tires. If someone has changed the size of the tire at any point it's not necessarily a bad thing but it's good to ask the seller if that was them or if they know that they've been changed and what the reason was behind it. You want to be checking the tread depth on the tires, see how much life they've got left in them. This car being on 17 inch wheels, the tires aren't necessarily cheap. And if you've not got much tread left on the tire, then you're gonna to need to buy a new set of tires pretty soon. Okay, so there's just a few things that I looked out for when purchasing my MX-5. There's obviously a lot more to look at than this, including the service history, and then the fluid levels in the car, such as the coolant, the brake fluid level, and the color of the oil will give you a really good idea of when it's last been serviced. Make sure you like and subscribe if you wanna see more of this content. Also leave a comment below if there's anything that you'd like to see specifically on my car and thank you very much for watching. Cheers.